Hello, my name is Anthony Arata. I am one of the staff here at the Morton Center. As you guys can kind of notice, I'm wearing something kind of unusual. This right here is what a habitant or French Canadian would have worn during the 18th century or beginning of the 19th century. However, what literally brings the whole outfit together, it's this right here. This is a saint sur fleshy which would be a hand-woven uh, belt. Uh, and as you guys might have noticed, saint sur fleshy That sounds like a very French term, and it is. And that's because in English, there is no set name for this accessory. Some people call it the arrow tip belt, the Native American belt, the Canadian sash, the Metis sash, the braided belt. Look, there's a lot of different names. So for convenience sake, and to make things much more simpler, for this presentation, I'm going to call it the Saints of Fleshy. So back in the day, there used to be dozens of different patterns of Saints of Fleshy. However, due to industrialization, uh, many of them were lost throughout time. Today, we have La Cadienne, La Charlevoix, and the most famous of them all is L'Assomption, which looks a lot like my belt right here. Now, even though these bells look very beautiful and intricate, uh, they serve many purposes. The first one is that it helps to keep your coat closed. So during the winter, at minus 30 degrees Celsius, having this bell close your coat helps the person to stay warm and confront the harsh, bitter winters. The second purpose is whoop, to keep my back straight. The coureur de bois would often have to lift heavy loads, their canoes on their back, and so having this bell helped to not restrain the muscle and make sure that they were able to lift throughout the day. And lastly, due to their colorful design, they also serve as a good trading commodity with the First Nations. As the trade expanded into the interior and throughout North America, the French Canadian brought with them their sense of fleshy, their clothing, their culture, and so as a result, many Métis nations adopted some of these features, especially the sense of fleshy. And this is why today there are many interpretations and discussion as to is the sense of fleshy a Métis heritage or a French Canadian one. After the fur trade ended, many French Canadians will continue to wear the saint sur fleshy, not necessarily for practical reason, but to display their nationalist pride. The more colorful and intricate your belt was, the higher status and the fancier you were seen. Sadly though, during that time, machines and factories were replacing the manual labor and the craftsmen who were making it, slowly but surely losing the saint sur fleshy out of fashion. However, one thing kept the Saints of Fleshy alive throughout the decades, and that's our famous winter, Carnaval. You must have heard him, you must have even met him, and that is our beautiful bonhomme, the Carnaval. As you can see, uh, he's always been rocking that beautiful Saints of Fleshy. Some people might think it's a scarf, but actually no, it always has been one of these. Today, People wear it during the winter time as a symbol of the winter carnaval, winter fun, or simply to display Quebec City's identity. By 2016, the Repertoire du Patrimoine Culturel du Québec has designated the fleshy as an intangible heritage. Thanks to this, the practice of weaving has been growing. And without further ado, let me show you how to make your very own sense of fleshy right here at home. So here's how you make a sensor fleshy here at your home. The first step is that you're going to need to cut your wool. Then you're going to lay it out into the pattern that you want. I chose red, white, blue, and green, but honestly, it's up to you. It goes with your preference. 
The next step is you're going to take your popsicle and then with the string, you're going to loop it around and make sure that each end are perfectly equal. So I'm going to do that again. Loop. Make sure it's equal. And then I'm going to do that with my white. So white. Loop it. Stay equal. And again with my white. Loop it. Make sure it's equal. And then go on with all the other colors. If you're going to separate your string, and you'll notice each of them are equal, and my popsicle is not moving, la 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 la, that means you did it correctly and that you looped it perfectly strong around the popsicle. So then with one side, it's really up to you, we're going to braid it. Now, if you already braid your hair, it's the same thing, but for those like me who's got really short hair and doesn't really braid often, here's how you do it. The first step is that you're going to separate your wool, your little strings, into three roughly equal parts. So, boom, boom. As you can see, one, two, and three. And then we're just going to twist them around like so. Imagine this is one, two, and three. You put one over two, three over one, two over three, one over two, and then you just repeat this sort of pattern to make a nice braid. So once you're done braiding one side, we're going to tie a knot at the other end. That's just to make sure that your braid doesn't get undone while you're weaving and to make sure that the threads stay all nice and together. And voila. So now we're gonna move on to the other side. And here, pay attention because that's the more complicated part. So you're gonna lay it flat on the table and make sure that all of your thread are nice and spread out. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so you're gonna take, you're always gonna work from right to left when weaving. I know it seems kind of strange, we're used to reading from left to right instead of left to right, but in that case, right to left. So when making a sensio fleshy, it's very important to follow this pattern. So you're going to take your red thread and then you're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and then you're going to pull it right up, right here. And then you're going to do the same thing, but with this thread. So over, under. Over, under, over, under, and then you're going to pull it right up there. And then, once again, with this thread right here, we're going to put it down. Okay? Once again, white thread, over, under, over, under, over. Under, pull it right up, and then put the red thread down. And we're going to continue. Over, under, over. So once you have done your pattern of over, under, over, under a bunch of time, and you have reached the end, you will get to be able to tie a knot real tight to make sure it doesn't get undone. And then once you have completed this side, you're gonna head over here, undo the knot on the braided side, and continue weaving this other half. I have here a completed Saint-Sophleche that I made earlier on. 
Now, you'll notice that my pattern right here is much more smaller, tight, and precise than this one. And that's perfectly normal. I have been doing this hobby for four years, and with time, you're able to make these belts tighter, more precise, and with more strings. So if yours looks a bit like this, that's perfect. And if you don't get it the first time, that's also okay. Just keep on trying. I also have here a belt I have been working on just to give you guys an idea how complex and big it can get. So mine right here is over 100 strings wide. And I decided to do a sort of thunderbolt uh, pattern. And you can see I've been a bit over ambitious since I've been doing a few little mistakes here and there. And I don't mind since doing a few mistakes here and there is a process of learning. And hopefully this belt will be completed in April and I'll be able to start with another one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about the French Canadian accessory and how it is an important patrimoine of Quebec culture.